Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel. I want to share with you my personal opinion on this whole idea of Ripple not properly supporting XRP because I get it. I understand even Ripple won't list XRP in their latest product to launch uh, called Liquidity Hub. And I talked about this before, but it's it's back in the news again. It's being widely discussed within the XRP community. And fair enough, I love seeing people share their thoughts and ideas as we should do. And I got to, I'm going to share with you perspective from a couple attorneys, including... Uh, attorney John Deaton uh, within this video exactly on this topic here. But I'll just tell you, even here at the outset, look, I give Ripple a pass on this, just like I gave a Coinbase and other cryptocurrency exchanges in the United States a pass when they delisted XRP because they felt the pressure, they felt under assault too. And so while I've I said many times, and I, I mean this very sincerely, I, I, I'm incredibly thankful uh, for, you know, cryptocurrency exchanges like Uphold that didn't delist XRP because they got some cojones for sure. Um, you know, just because somebody doesn't have that level of gusto and risk tolerance doesn't mean that I'm going to somehow hold it against them when it's the SEC that really we should be blaming for all this. Well, similarly, when it comes to what's going on with Ripple and the whole liquidity hub situation, uh, I just, I just, you just got to ask yourself, if Ripple were to list XRP today in liquidity hub, would that strengthen or harm their current position from a legal perspective? Would that help or harm anything? Because don't forget, right now, there's a reason that actually, actually dating back to, I think, 2019, Ripple has only been selling XRP uh, to, to uh, strategic partners having to do with on-demand liquidity. They eliminated their programmatic sales entirely, by the way, for, like, uh, roughly several years ago. Th that was a strategic move, and no doubt their legal team advised, hey, this is this is what should be done. It probably came from the very top, including, I, I would hazard a guess that Stuart Aldrati had a piece to say on that. I would, I'm just purely speculating on that point. But still, so even Ripple won't list XRP, and I say, good for them, and so what? It's not going to change the fact that the SEC is on the wrong side of history, and when this is all said and done, XRP is going to be back on every damn uh, United States-based cryptocurrency exchange on the damn planet. That's my anticipation because I do believe that what should be done will ultimately be done. And also I got a, a story I want to share with you about Coinbase. Um, they, I just, I wish they had this type of spine a few years ago, but they are firm. They have indicated that they have no intention of leaving the United States. But uh, before digging in any further and sharing additional thoughts on this, I, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, so just some real brief table setting here just to make sure everybody's on the same page and understand what's going on. This is a story from April 17th from Blockworks titled, Ripple's new liquidity hub excludes XRP at least for now. And this set the community on fire in terms of like some people being completely outraged and there are people like me who are like, no, nah, I get where they're coming from. It makes sense. And, and it's fine. And even if you disagree with me, I respect where you're coming from. It's fine. I just, I do disagree, but that's okay. You know, it's, it's, we, these are subjective opinions, not objective. It's perfectly okay. But to understand Liquidity Hub, it's basically a price aggregator. So Ripple's customers who are broadly just involved in crypto or want to become involved in crypto and offer their customers access to crypto, they can source, you know, Bitcoin and ETH, Litecoin, Ethereum Classic, Bitcoin Cash, they can source that through Ripple's liquidity hub. It's not Ripple actually facilitating the transactions. It's more like, it's just like, you know, Kayak or I guess Priceline or whatever, or Google Flights. It's, it's, it's like that. They're a price aggregator. You can say, here are the sources that uh, you, from which you could choose, if you want to, to purchase any, any of these cryptocurrencies. Here's the current prices. You get real-time quotes, and then that's it. Now, the SEC, because look, if Ripple were offering XRP, the SEC could come see it. Okay. <laughs> They'd have a stronger argument, wouldn't they? Uh, then, Because look, like I said just a minute ago, Ripple stopped their programmatic sales for a reason. And so though, even though in this case, the XRP wouldn't be coming from Ripple, they'd have a hand playing the role of matchmaker effectively. And you know what the SEC would argue. They'd argue that against Ripple. That would weaken their argument. Why put yourself, if you're Ripple, why put yourself in that position? Instead, why not just wait for regulatory clarity? I, I get it. Um, and, and so to me, that makes all the sense in the world. And ultimately, um, and I don't really need to read this article. I just want to make sure that everyone's caught up to speed on this or else the rest isn't going to make as much sense or be impact as impactful. But R Ripple, in explaining that XRP at launch is not going to be part of this product, they wrote, quote, 
XRP will be evaluated along with other tokens for support within the product. And that's from a blog. They stated, quote, we look forward to supporting XRP as it receives regulatory clarity in the U.S., end quote. And they actually initially, upon the uh, announcement of this product in November of 2021, they did say XRP would be included. And of course, they made that assertion after the lawsuit had initially been filed against them. But I, I suspect, and this is speculation, but I suspect that they were anticipating that the lawsuit would have ended by the time that they launched Liquidity Hub, in which case they wouldn't need to note, even if they were internally thinking in 2021, well, we can't launch XRP, this with XRP. Uh, you know, not, not, not if there's a lawsuit ongoing. So they're probably, I'm just speculating, but I think perhaps they might have been guessing, yeah, lawsuit, there's a good chance it could be over by then. In which case, if we get you know, positive clarity for XRP, then we just include it, just like we're saying here right now in November of 2021. So, uh, but check this out. So now let's get to the perspective from a couple attorneys within the community attorney, uh, Bill Morgan and attorney John D. So here is the uh, Crypto, Basic article, or, or, uh, Crypto Basic article covering this today. And this is titled, Top Lawyer Says Coinbase XRP Listing Not Coming Despite Recent Meeting. And in a video literally yesterday, I articulated my particular stance on this, so I don't want to regurgitate all of that. But yeah, there's a, you know, in terms of, Coinbase relisting XRP, if there's some any like an ounce of clarity, are they actually going to? Well, it depends on, I'm not completely confident, but it will depend on how uh, the, the decision from Judge Torres is written. Peace reads as follows. Members of the XRP community are still commenting on the recent meeting between Coinbase's chief legal officer, Paul Graywall, and Ripple's general counsel, Stuart Alderati. Some XRP enthusiasts believe the meeting might prompt Coinbase to relist XRP on its trading platform. Reacting to the development, a famous influencer of the sixth largest cryptocurrency asked whether XRP listing on Coinbase will follow the meeting. However, Australian-based pro-crypto lawyer Bill Morgan does not think Coinbase will relist XRP due to the meeting between Alderati and Graywell. And here's the exact comment from attorney Bill Morgan on this topic. He shared this on Twitter. He wrote verbatim, No, a Coinbase XRP listing will not follow. Why would Ripple expect Coinbase to relist XRP when in the last few weeks, Ripple decided not to use XRP in Ripple's own liquidity hub service? The meeting was more likely about how Ripple could assist Coinbase in, uh, in either its petition for a writ of mandamus and or its defense to a SEC enforcement action. Coinbase's different treatment of XRP, you know, halting secondary market sales on its exchange, than any other digital asset traded on its exchange that the SEC has alleged in its lawsuits our securities will continue. And, and, and that's that's a fair enough point there. And so specifically what was triggering that was the fact that Graywall of Coinbase, who's their top in-house legal guy, met with Stuart Alderati, Ripple's top in-house legal guy. They're like, uh, is this some sort of indication it's going to be realistic? Well, no. The, the soonest that you could potentially see that, I'm, that's why I'm totally on board with what Attorney Morgan's saying here, the soonest you're going to see that is after Judge Torres rules something, and that's if it's positive, and then the question is, to what degree is it positive, and is Coinbase going to continue to be skittish? It, are, they, are they just talking like they have a, a backbone, or do they actually have a backbone now? I, I'm thinking they probably, to at least to some degree, actually developed one. I don't know for sure if they're going to relist XRP. But they're, they're, they've certainly recognized that their survival is on the line at this point. Now, Attorney John Deaton retweeted that perspective from Attorney Bill Morgan, and Attorney Deaton wrote the following. Bill's point below is a significant one. Ripple isn't listing XRP on its own liquidity hub platform until there is more regulatory clarity in the United States specific to XRP. So much depends on what Judge Torres decides. This is the main reason why we fought so hard to be involved. Our amicus brief informed the judge 75,000 XRP holders from the U.S. and 143 countries around the world joined to object to the SEC's alleged protection. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll tell you what, folks, if this is protection, just, just, just don't protect me. Like, this, <laughs> this is the most harmful protection that anyone has ever provided to me. You know what I mean, man? I'm just saying... And then Attorney Deaton says, we submitted over 3,500 affidavits from investors, users, and developers. We helped to get the SEC's experts' testimony excluded. I'm confident Judge Torres recognizes the huge public interest and will act accordingly. I believe she shoots down the SEC's crazy, overbroad theory, but until we read the exact language, no one can predict whether Coinbase or even Ripple 
will list XRP on their platforms immediately. Yeah, so it depends on exactly what the ruling is, like I keep saying here. But just, just because it is true that even Ripple won't list XRP today on their own damn platform, I say so what? And that's fine. I know some people listening are going to disagree with me and they're like, better know that you should do it. And yeah. I just, I don't think it's a good strategic move from a legal perspective. This is my personal opinion. It's okay if you disagree. Uh, just know that I am correct. No, I'm <laughs> it's okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, right, well, half kidding. Half kidding. Um, then there's this. Coinbase remains 100% committed to U.S. market. Armstrong. United States-founded cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase has no plans to move its operations out of the U.S., CEO Brian Armstrong told investors in a Q1 earnings call. On May 5th, Armstrong assured shareholders that the firm is 100% committed to the U.S. market over the long term, despite regulatory uncertainty in the U.S., and then he said, this is a quote from him, by the way. So let me be clear, we're 100% committed to the U.S. I founded this company in the United States because I saw that rule of law prevails here. That's really important, and I'm actually really optimistic on the U.S. getting this right. End quote. And by the way, I do agree with that. You know, the United States is not some sort of banana republic here. Great clothing store. But, uh, but seriously, when it comes to the rule of law, when it comes to the rule of law, uh, the United States... It, look, no justice system is perfect, but it tends to work here. More often than not, what should happen does end up happening, and it is not the case that judges, by and large, are in the pockets of politicians or you know anybody in, from Congress. No, no, no. That is not what we're seeing here, and that is all. Is evident. In fact, you want you want evidence of this? The SEC is getting their asses handed to them consistently at the Supreme Court level. Five out of the last six cases that made it to the Supreme Court with the SEC, they lost. And you're seeing all sorts of instances of this, uh, even at the district court and appellate level. So pretty damn clear that, you know, in a general sense, what should get done you know, is, is most probable to get done. And I'm optimistic that we're going to see something positive and fair with, uh, you know, even from Judge Torres, but... If we have to go through the appeals process, fine, and I, I don't think we will, but if we have to, okay. Uh, but what shall what needs to be done, what, what should be done, is ultimately going to happen. I still firmly believe that. And it, so, again, it is good, you know, despite, and I do have genuine critiques against Coinbase. You know, uh, for instance, like, you always have this question of, like, when there's times of high activity and volatility, you know, some of the most crucial times to have access to a, a cryptocurrency exchange, I, I always have this question in the back of my mind, Will Coinbase even be live? Because frequently, when there's times of volatility, it just they just stop working. And I'm sitting there thinking, my God, you sons of bitches, you saw what happened at the end of 2017. Uh, and I, I can understand being caught off guard because, I mean, the, the influx of customers, my gosh. I, to, to some degree, I want to give the, the cryptocurrency exchanges in late 2017 a pass because that was beyond unprecedented. But seeing, seeing Coinbase you know, cease to function for, at times of high activity after that, years after the fact like unforgivable because it, it, it's no it's nowhere near the surge in terms of percentage increase that we saw before yet still and so that's one thing that's not the biggest problem then there's the fact that they substantially delayed handing out flare tokens resulting in uh, individuals not having the opportunity to do whatever they want with their flare i think a lot of people probably would have wrapped and delegated their flare they didn't have the option because it wasn't given to them uh then the songbird tokens that are the, the rightful property so far as i'm concerned of uh, the XRP holders for the airdrop, just pretending like that's not a thing that they're doing. They're just not handing it out, though. So I, I have beef with those things. Um, I don't as much have beef with the fact that they delisted XRP because they were put on the hotspot. I'm just trying to be as fair as possible here. I do think it's more impressive, and, and we should be more thankful of you know, exchanges, like I said at the outset of the video, like Uphold, who had the, the guts to say, no, you're wrong, SEC, and follow through, understanding that they could make them a tremendous target like, you know, among the first to get attacked, perhaps in a more notable way. But I, 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 in the end, I still look at it like everyone's, every exchange is a damn target anyway. So if, if Coinbase thought that by doing this, they were somehow going to appease the SEC and they wouldn't be a target, if that was any part of their thinking, uh, they were sorely mistaken. And that, that may have been, though. That may have been part of it. Then there was also, of course, the IPO, so... But I talked about that yesterday. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.